We, uh, we want to thank the Lord for the blessings of God, don't we? And how good He is to us and the opportunity to bring you the Word today. And if you have your Bibles, you can turn to the book of Ecclesiastes, chapter 12. We have been in our 12th, we are in our 12th week uh, preaching on uh, the book of Ecclesiastes. We took a little bit of a volley there during uh, Resurrection Sunday. But uh, anyway, we have been on consistently the book of Ecclesiastes since we began. And the preacher, as he is called, Solomon, takes us on a journey from the very first part of life to the very last part. Now, these are important scriptures. Not a lot of pastors preach on Ecclesiastes. They stray away from it. But I'm going to tell you there's a wealth of information for us spiritually found in Ecclesiastes. And I don't believe you can leave out anything that God has for us. You need all the whole counsel of God, the entirety of His Word, to really to develop your life. And uh, you may find today what we're going to deal with today, you may think, ooh, that's kind of rough. It's kind of hard. It's a reality that we all face. And He talks about life. He talks about death. He talks about living in between. And uh, he talks about a lot of things. So today we simply entitled this message, Going Down Slow. And actually that title comes from a song, and I'll tell you about that in a few moments. Statistically speaking, it indicates that most people who come to Christ come to him while they are relatively young. As a matter of fact, percentages tell us that 95% of all believers come to Christ before they're 50 years old. Brother Tom, sitting over to my right here, this past week had an opportunity to lead a young man, 20, about 20 years of age, to the Lord at his home that was delivering some building supplies. And he had the opportunity of leading him to the Lord. And that man left different than he came. Amen. Amen. This past Sunday, Randy and I, we had the opportunity. We've got multiple Randys and multiple Toms. So, you know. We're the one church where you've got a, a carbon copy. We even have duplicate Carltons. We have Carlton Bruffy and we have Carlton Duck. So anyway, you know, we just have duplication here, I guess you could say. But uh, anyway, he and I went to the hospital last Sunday afternoon and visited a friend of his who he'd worked with for 25 years. And uh, this man is in stage four colon cancer and uh, pray for him. He's been now taken to Farmville to a center and uh, pray for him. But we had the opportunity to witness to him. And as we witnessed to him, I got to a point and I asked him, I said, you know, Harold, has it, are you a Christian? And he said, no, I'm not. And I had the opportunity to present the gospel to him. And last Sunday evening, about 7.20 or 7.30, he asked the Lord Jesus Christ into his heart and his life and he got saved. Amen. <laughs> Isn't that wonderful? So anywhere in life, there's any place, whether a child or whether someone just entering into adulthood or along in adulthood, and even that, I've led a man uh, right at the brink of death, 90-some years old, to the Lord. So, you know, God can save you any place, any time in life. I think it's important, though, that we hear the message of God and receive Him as our personal Savior. But it's interesting that statistics, and so that tells me it's crucially important for you and I to live what we say that we believe and that we declare the message of God in our living every day that people can see Christ in us. As you're going to see here, the preacher, as he is called, and he's also called the searcher, tells us, remember your creator in the days of your youth. Now, remembering God does not merely mean today thinking about him once in a while or when you get in a, a, in a tight spot or you've painted yourself in a, to a corner or you using God as a last resort and you remember God and many times that's the way that we operate. We only call on God when we've tried everything and we've run out of resources and we think, oh yeah, I can call on God. Actually, he should be your first choice, not your last chance. And so, you know, you don't just think about your creator once in a while. So, a matter of fact, the Bible even begins by the fact of recognizing God as our creator. In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. And so, that in that fact today, we better remember who he is and those beautiful songs that Tom went back into the eons of time that I tried to look up the date that song was written and I was not successful. But uh, be thou my vision goes back to the days when I was a kid 
And we sung that in the Methodist Church, and it was even before that. And then the, the more recent songs, but I'm glad for the songs that helps us to remember who our God is and what He can do in our life. And you've got to remember today, God's not today a, just a chance. God is a choice. And so it means today you've got to re do several things today in your life. You've got to come to the place today in your living that you've got to relate to Him. You, you've got to know that He is God. He's not your last chance. He's, he's your anchor. He's your helper. He's your strength. He is your savior. He is your everything. And you know without him, you can't make it through life, period. That he even gave you the very breath of life that you have. And knowing that even in creation, that God breathed into you the breath of life. So we've got to relate to him. Not only do we need to relate to him, but we've got to walk with him today. And the only way you can walk with him is to first know him as your personal savior and the fact that you received him into your heart and your life. And I'm going to tell you, oh, what a difference he'll make when you receive him. The gentlemen that was, the gen these two guys that were saved last week, I'm telling you, God is making a difference in their life right now because now they can not only relate to him, but now they can walk with him. Thirdly, we find that you can discover him. And boy, I tell you, I'm glad that he is the helper. I'm glad he's the resource. I'm glad he's our deliverer. I'm glad he's our present help. I'm glad he's our everything because we can discover without God, we can't even exist. Amen. And then fourthly, we learn, and Paul made this emphatically clear, and in his writings he said, that I may know him. You've got to learn to know God today. Not just that the fact that God has his name written in the 66 books of God's word. And just not the fact today that, yeah, I believe him as creator. Just not the fact that you believe there is a God. You've got to know him. And you've got to involve him in your life. Just not sitting in a pew on Sunday, but in your daily living. You've got to know that our God is real. Amen. Praise God. Now, there are two ways for this. One, in the, day, the days of trouble are coming. As I told our congregation at 930, I don't think they're just coming. I think they've already come. Days of trouble are with us today. I mean, it's subtle. It's powerful today. The appeal for the world, the appeal for the flesh, the appeal for carnality today is constantly with us. It's always a drawing. Well, I got saved. I'm a child of God, but you're still in a battle. Because you're in a battle with your flesh. Yes, you have Christ living within you, but you still have that Adamic nature, that flesh nature that wants to take the shortcuts of life and go with what feels good in life. But I'm going to tell you there's a better way, a higher way. There's God's way today. And I'm glad that way today provides us encouragement and strength and help that we don't have to take that lesser way, that substandard way. We can take the ways of God. Are they always easy? No, but they're always, there's always a blessing that goes with them. Amen. But we're constantly feeling this tug and this pull on us. How many times have you been in a valley in a trial and you felt like giving up? That's the flesh. I mean, it happened to Elijah. He, he had prayed a great prayer. Fire came down from heaven. He goes and sits on a juniper tree and asks God to kill him. I mean, how many times do we face life and we're ready to throw in the towel and quit? How many times do we just feel like, you know, even to the point that we may even say, I'm not even sure there is a God. Be careful what you say. We're getting pressures in our society, in our uh, generation in which we live in today to conform and to move to this lesser way. Folks, let me tell you something today. There today is only one way to live, and that one way to live is for God. Amen. But here's what's happening to us in life today. And I jotted this down. It hit me just this morning that you know what we're doing? The problem is... You need to stop tithing today to the devil out of your life. You need to stop giving the devil the best part of your living today. When you get in that place of giving up and quitting or that place of temptation and you slide off to the side and commit some sin or get involved in some means or way of the world today, you know what you're doing? You're doing nothing but paying tithes to the devil in your life. And we've all done it. Let's face it. But praise God, my 
My desire is to never give the devil anything any, uh, once again. Amen. We need today to live our life concentrated, separated, and dedicated, and yielded to the Lord Jesus Christ. God, God demands all of our living all of the time. He's not a part-time, only Sunday God. He's an every day, every hour, every second, every breath of the day God that desires, not only desires, but demands your focus, amen. Evil pressures increase, don't they? We're living in a mixed up, messed up world. And that is the one good reason today to remember your creator in the days of your youth. Secondly, your motivations today are highest now. You know, there are a lot of motivations going on in the world, aren't there? I mean, one of the signs of our age is today basically the unwillingness to change. People don't want to change. Thank God these men that were led to the Lord this past week, thank God they were willing to change and invite Christ into your life. I'm glad one day I was willing to change on the 2nd of February, 1975. I was willing to call upon this God of heaven and say, forgive me and come into my heart and save me. And on the authority of God's word, he did that very thing. Did he change your life? He sure did. Has he changed everything about you, even your thinking? Yes, he has. He's changed everything about me. But thank God he's not through with me yet. Because he's still working on all of us if we'll submit our lives to the, his working and his leadership. Yes, today, it can be difficult to change. I'm not going to stand up here and tell you that it's always easy. Yet, it's never too late today to be willingly today rooted and grounded in the fact and that you can grow in Christ and be the vessel that God's called you to be. There's no living out there in the world. Living is in the presence of God. There's nothing out there worth living for because, listen, all the world is going to do is wring you out like a sponge and then throw you away. But I'm glad that we have a God today that takes our brokenness and our shattered lives and our messed up lives and everything that we've done wrong because we're all guilty of that today. Maybe you haven't been a drug addict or a drunk, but you've been a sinner and you're all in the same category. We've all fallen short. We've all messed up. We've all missed the mark. But thank God he takes us as we are, but he makes us what he wants us to be. Amen. Thank God. So realizing that today, it's never too late. You can't hide from God. I've traveled this world extensively. The years that I served in, on active duty in the military, most of that was consumed with travel. And I've seen a lot of the world, but you know what? I can tell you, every country I've been in, every city I've been in, every place that I've been in, I've seen God. He's there. You can't hide from Him. Amen. On the far reaches of our nation, on the far reaches of our globe, God is there. He is evident in all of life today. He knows everything that goes on. God today is not in sitting in senility in heaven today in a rocking chair wondering what day it is. He's well aware of what day it is, what's going on, and what he is doing in your life and mind today. He knows every thought of your heart. He knows everything that courses through your mind. He knows your every intention. He knows your every motivation. He knows everything that you're facing. He knows everything that you're in. He knows everything that you've gone through. He knows everything that you're going to face. But still, he's there for you. And he's a God that cares for you today. He knows today every word that proceeds out of your mouth. He knows the motives that we many times try to cloak and hide and put in a closet. He sees today the duplicity today, the exception of the lovelessness in our lives, that we don't love God the way that we should, or we don't serve God the way that we ought to today. But listen, praise God, he's made a provision for us all. I'm glad God didn't say, well, I'm sorry, but you can't have salvation. I'm glad today his arms are open, outstretched, and he says, come unto me, all ye that labor and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Amen. I'm glad that we have such a God on our side today. Amen. You're never outside the grace of God that God can't change your life. Amen. Fear God. There's not a lot of fear in the, of the Lord anymore, is there? Fear God. Have faith today in the fact that he does exist. Stand in the awe of our God and you know that he is an awesome God today. 
Every one of you in this room and every one of you that are sitting and watching this today, wherever you're at on Facebook and live stream, let me tell you what, God has been with you in an amazing way. And today, I believe it's time the redeemed of the Lord start saying so. I believe we've become too quiet, complacent. We've let a pandemic drain us and sap us of the joy of the Lord, which is our strength. It's taken away our praise. We're just trying to get along. We've, we've accepted the mode of survivor, just trying to survive. And today we've totally missed the point and we don't see God as being the awesome God that he is any longer. I'm going to tell you today, nothing has changed the fact that he is God. Nothing has changed the fact that he's an awesome God. And even, and it's really, this is even more reason with what we've been through to see who brought us through for us to give praise to our God. Amen. And to exalt his name and to lift up his name together. You need to stand in awe of God, church. You need to realize he is God. Amen. He is almighty. He's everlasting. He's eternal. He has always been and he shall always be. He is Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. He is everything that you'll need in life. He'll, he's everything that you'll need for eternity today. He'll supply your every need. He'll bring you through every valley. He'll, he'll encourage your heart. He'll heal your wounds. He'll strengthen your life. And when everybody else walks away, he is that God who's still there for you today. Amen. That's our God. And when you come to that point that you really have faith in his existence and you really experience his grace in the new birth, have you? Have you today? Well, I'm in church, Pastor. That doesn't make you a Christian. Well, I believe the Bible. That doesn't make you a Christian either. It's not until you receive it into your heart and accept it and accept Christ as your Savior. That's the difference maker. When you have done that and experienced his grace, it's exactly what Paul talked about. For by grace are you saved by faith. When you've done that, you can then stand in the awe of God. And you know what happens as the product of that? Now you can resolve that you're going to obey him. Now today, don't tell me. Today, God knows every one of our hearts, doesn't he? And we know whether we are obeying the Lord or whether we're not. Well, preacher, well, you know, I would do. I didn't ask for your would do's. I didn't ask for your butts. You're not a billy goat. I didn't ask for all the, all the excuses that you have conjured up, written up, and rehearsed in your mind to say why you're not. I'm not asking for that because none of it will hold water anyway when you stand before God. When you'll get these things involved in your life, faith, grace and all then today you will learn the value of obeying God and living for him coming to church is a great part of it but that's a small part it, it, it's what's what is God doing with your life outside these doors how are you living it what's the image that you're portraying are you showing the love of Jesus are you judgmental critical is that your mentality today that's not the mentality of a Christian you to love, you to care for, you to reach out, and you try to encourage people and lift them up in Christ, and you show them that God is real. Listen, this is a secret. I'm telling you today, something today, maybe nobody has ever told you, but I'm telling you today, this is a secret to life. It really is. It's not pie in the sky, get all you can get, step on anybody you can. That's not what it's about. That's the way of the world. The way of God is to obey him with an humble spirit today. I want you to take your Bibles and I want you to join me in the word today. I've gone on a lot longer on the introduction than I had planned, but it's okay. You probably need it and I did too. And you did too at home. Thank you. Ecclesiastes 12, 1 through 8. I'm going to loosen you up here in a few minutes. I can tighten you all up. I can tweak you all right now. I got you all so tight, so tight you can't even hardly grin. But you think, I've been tough on you. Listen to what Solomon says. Here you're going to see the progression of life. You know what? You are in this, and I am too. You're going to see yourself in these scriptures. Listen to what he says. Remember now the Creator in the days of thy youth, while the evil days come not, nor the years draw nigh, 
when thou shalt say, I have no pleasure in them. While the sun or the light or the moon or the stars be not darkened, nor the clouds return after the rain. In the days when the keeper of the house shall tremble, and the strong men, right here is where we found ourselves. Strong men shall bow themselves, and the grinders cease. You know what your grinders are? Those things that you bite into that steak with. That's your grinders. It's hard to bite into a steak when you don't have the equipment to do it with, right? <laughs> really? Amen. Well, you felt so strong. Now all you can do is roll out of bed in the morning and say, good Lord, this morning. And the ground has ceased because there are few. And those that look out of the window be darkened. You don't see as well as you used to see. And the door shall be shut in the streets when the sound of the grinding is low. You can't hear as good as you used to could hear. <laughs> Boy, aren't y'all getting happy now? And he shall rise up at the voice of the bird, and all the daughters of music shall be brought low. I can't even hear the birds singing. Also, when they shall be afraid of that which is high, and fear shall be in the way, and the almond tree shall flourish, and the grasshopper shall be, uh, in, shall be a burden, and desire shall fail, because man goeth to his long home, and the mourners go about the street. You in a box. And you're dead. Or even the silver cord is loosed. Or the golden bowl is broken or be broken. Or the pitcher be broken at the fountain. Or the wheel broken at the cistern. Then shall the dust return to the earth. That's exactly what he's talking about. I've stood over many graves. Earth to earth. Ashes to ashes. Dust to dust. And the earth as it was. And the spirit shall return unto God who gave it. Vanity of vanities, saith the preacher, all is vanity. Amen. That has been riveting throughout this book of Ecclesiastes. Now, I want, I want you to do something here over the next few minutes. I want you to open your mind. I want you to open your heart today. Be captivate, captivated by what God's word is going to speak to your heart and life today. There's not another text in the entirety of the scriptures today like what I just read. Solomon was an amazing writer that God amazingly used. In his old age, Solomon wrote what I've just read to you in the book of Ecclesiastes. In his younger life, he wrote what we know as the Song of Solomon. That is certainly a different tone than this. And then in between life, we find he wrote us the book of wisdom that we know as Proverbs. Here, though, we're not going to talk about Song of Solomon or Proverbs. We're going to talk about Ecclesiastes. Solomon is looking back on life. And actually what he's doing, he's taking a, he's taking a Polaroid shot of his life and showing you some of the things that have happened in his life, basically, that he's learned from. And if you're not learning from life, then you need to wake up. Haven't we all blundered in life? Every one of us sitting in this church or at home or wherever you are, every one of us have failed in things in life, haven't we? So you're never going to succeed until you face that fact. And perhaps today you remember today some of the things that happened in your life. And I told you this, this message title that I used, and I asked, and Horace don't answer this, but I asked the uh, 930 congregation this morning, who is the man that was known as the King of Blues? B.B. King. King. That's right. Anybody ever seen B.B. King? You ever, I mean, nobody could play a guitar like B.B. King. I'd love to have one of his guitars on the staff. It's got B.B. King. I mean, it's amazing. Well, do you know what the name of his guitar was? Lucille. Lucille. I mean, we got some nostalgia here. Amen. As a matter of fact, he uh, passed away in 2015. 
He wrote some great songs, and I don't know if you like blues. I kind of like blues, and I was telling Drew and Tiff yesterday, I like to listen to a little blues if I'm driving down the road and got a little bit of distance to go. I like to just listen to the blues and hear that guitar ringing and twanging and hear the sound of the organ and the guitar and all this stuff going on in the background, little drums here and there. But he, he, wrote, chain, he wrote songs like Chains and Things, Amen. Uh, he also, one of his outstanding songs is, you probably remember this one, The Thrill is Gone. You all remember that one? Yeah. I think Wilton sings that sometime. Amen. He wrote, <laughs> I'm just picking on you, amen. Told you I got to loosen you all up a little bit because I got to hit you with a baseball bat in a minute. Amen. He wrote one, and, and he said, listen to this one. Nobody loves me but my mama. And sometimes I think she's jiving too. Amen. B.B. <laughs> King wrote that song, I'm Going Down Slow. Amen. Some of you don't Google it now. Don't get on that cell phone because we're going to hear it and we're going to say, turn it off. Amen. In the passage that I've read to you this morning, Here's a snapshot of going down slow. It is a reality of life that we all face, and we've got to face it. This, this downward decaying that we look at in life today that results in the finality of death is a reality. James said, you know, our life is as a vapor. It appears for a little while, and then it vanishes away. We find the Hebrew writer tells us it is appointed unto man once to die, and after that the judgment. So you realize when you came out of, of your mother's womb screaming to the top of your voice, you began the dying process in addition to the living process. So we try to fight it. We do everything that we can. We start going to Jameson Gym and we're lifting weights and we're pumping iron and we're running in place and we're sweating like somebody beating us over the stick, over the head with a stick. We do all those things. We get involved in a little bit of Botox, detox, rebox. I mean, we fight the aging process every way that we can. I mean, we color it up, we dab it up, we rearrange it, we puff it up, we paint it up, we take chisels to try to get it off at night. I mean, you know, we suck it in, we wear these things that pulls it up together. I mean, you all got the same problem. We're all getting older. Amen. Sorry. That's the way it is. Amen. It's not my fault. That is the aging process, and it continues. But Ecclesiastes 12 is, is the lot of every person today who has been born. It's a reality that we all face. Now, don't let it get you down to feet. Don't walk out. Oh, Lord. Don't sit at home and think, well, I'm, I reached this pinnacle in life and I'm this old and whatever. And I, you know, so, and I told a little lady just last night on the telephone, I said, you know, age is nothing but a number. If you think you're old, you're going to be old. If you think you can't, you won't. And if you want to give up and die and sit down and throw in the towel, that's exactly what's going to happen. But I'm going to tell you, and I'm going to tell you just bluntly. You're disobeying God when you have that mentality. You're living in sin when you have that mentality. God didn't call you to sit down and give up and quit. God calls you to rise up and build and serve him and be faithful to him. Amen. God will work in your life, but you've got to open your life and get your mind fixed on Christ. The preacher is suggesting something here that really should be prevalent in our lives, and that's a joy, so joyful surrender today to the good grace of God. It's grace that found you in a mess, but it's grace, it's grace that brought you out. It's grace that delivered you, saved you today. This will enable you today to rejoice in the Lord all of your life. But you don't know what I mean. How have you been for the last year plus, preacher? We've been in a pandemic, wearing masks, people getting shots, all the craziness, distancing ourselves, not touching nobody, not hugging nobody. I keep myself locked in. I don't go nowhere. I keep the shades drawn. I don't even breathe the air. I mean, listen, you are going off the deep end. Get yourself together. God's in control. And you don't have to quit and give up and die. God is still alive. Amen. And if you're crazy enough, I won't say it and you can just do what you want to with it. If you're crazy enough to believe everything that the White House is saying and CDC is saying, then I want to sell you some good land in Florida sometime, okay? Because you're falling for everything and anything today. 
I think it's good to take precautions, and we have and we will. But I don't think it's time to jump off the deep end and quit living and giving up and living in peer and panic, fear and panic and thinking today, oh, I don't know what we're going to do. I don't know. So I just worry about I can't sleep in life. I'm just going dry. I just, oh, I got to take pills to put me to sleep. I got to have somebody come in there and wake me up so I can get up in the morning and take a pill to wake me up. Listen, that's not the way God intends for you to live. Live your life to the glory of God. Live it all for Jesus. Amen. Let him work in your life. So let me bring you to the theme because I got three points and I didn't bring the poem. Maybe Roscoe's got one in his back pocket. The theme reads like this. Every stage of life is a gift from God. Use them wisely. Amen. Number one, love God in the prime of life. This is found in verse one where it says, remember your creator in the days of your youth. Now, the word remember is a very important word because actually this is not a suggested word. It is a command word. You're commanded to remember. Did you see the video of the Casting Crowns when they sung that song, Remember? How they were casting away the stuff of the world. And it doesn't mean you've got to go home and throw everything out for the junk guy to come by and pick up. It doesn't mean you've got to live in a cardboard shack. It means today, yeah, God's blessed you and there's nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that. But it means today, where's your focal point? Where's your attention fixed at? Is it on Christ or is it on the things of the world? You've got to remember, this is actually a word of command today. To remember God in your youth is to really create a direction for your life. It's who you're going to look to, trust in, and who you're going to reside in today. If you've never come to God in salvation, listen, you need that change in your life. Because right now, if you're not saved, you're dead in your sin, and you're going smack dab to hell. That's the bottom line. Not because I said so, but the soul that sinneth shall surely die. And we're all sinners, aren't we? And we all need salvation. And God says, here's salvation. I secured it, I bought it, and I provided it for you through my son Jesus. If you've never received that, then my question to you is, when is it going to take, what is it going to take for you to do that? God's offering you life. You're dead. I'm physically alive, yeah, but you're spiritually dead. And you're going to die in that sin. And it's going to cause you to go to hell because you rejected God as your Savior. Get saved. Amen. amen. Remember your Creator. And have today this passionate faith today in, in a fidelity, in a trust of the Lord today. Trust the Lord in all things today. Whether it's bright and sunny in life or whether it's dark or dismal. Whether the sun is shining or it's pouring down rain in your life today. Whatever you're facing, I use those as an analogy today. Whatever you're in in life, let me tell you what, God is still in control, amen. You're not control. You know, some of us, boy, if it's a jury day and raining, we kind of kind of down. You know, I just, oh, I'm kind of blah day. I just feel like sitting at home doing nothing, you know. But the sun comes out and you're ready to go out there and charge the world with a squirt gun. <laughs> it's the same day. It's just because you've got a cloud cover Hiding the sun. The sun is actually still shining. The sun is still shining in your heart if you're a Christian today. And even though you go through the valley of the shadows of life, God is still with you. His rod, his staff, they comfort you today. Amen. To remember your creator is to have this trust of God in your life today. To remember God means today you're trusting God when really life is terrible. And sometimes life is terrible. Sometimes life is disgusting. Sometimes life is hard. Oh, but I got a God that's better than all of that. Amen. Remember your creator means today that you're walking with God even in the times where you're lonely and you think, man, my family and dropped me. My friends have dropped me. Nobody cares. I'm going to tell you there's one who still cares. And as a songwriter, no one ever cared for me like Jesus. Amen. Remember your creator. That means today that you're thanking, thanking God today even when life seems unfair. You know, things come, things happen. I've thought those thoughts. Life is unfair. I've shared a couple of them with you here recently. And there's many more. But you know what? I'm not going to concentrate on the unfairness of life. I'm going to concentrate on the goodness of God. And if you're always thinking about, I just don't say, you know, I got passed over for a promotion. I didn't get this. I didn't get that. I didn't do this. I didn't do that. Blah, 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 blah. And you're just nothing but running your mouth off with a bunch of garbage that doesn't make any sense and nobody wants to hear. 
And if you're going to live controlled by that, you know what? That's exactly what you're going to be. And all of a sudden, you look around and you say, oh, nobody's now no more. I, where'd all my friends go? Uh, my family don't even call me no more. Because you are the picture of negativity. And nobody wants to have nothing to do with you because you painted God as being that in your life. That's hard, isn't it? But it's exactly where it is at. And it's exactly where we live. I'm going to tell you, God's bigger than all the troubles that you faced in life. Amen. There's two people sitting at home right now. With what they've been through over the last year and a half plus, if anybody had a ticket to quit and give up, they had the ticket. And you know who I'm talking about. Derek and Marilyn. But they have risen up through all of this. And they're still trusting God. And I love them and I appreciate them. You've had your share too, haven't you? But just because life sometimes is terrible, does that mean God is terrible? No, it means God is good. Because when everything else was turned against you, God turned towards you. Amen. Thank God. Remember your creator. He could have said, you know, I am Adoniah. I am Yahweh. I'm El Shaddai. But he said, I am the creator. Amen. And we've got to recognize that. He used the term creator today on purpose, reminding us today. And you've got to remember that God has the prerogative today that as a creator, he, we, we are created in his image. He's given us the breath of life. And he is the creator and he can do whatever he wants to do with us any way he wants to do it. For Jeremiah said this, he is the potter and we are the clay. Who are we trusting today? Who are we living for? What's your life? You walk around griping, complaining all the time? That's not the way life is supposed to be. Life is good with God. And whether you believe it, accept it or not, it is. I like what Paul said in the book of Ephesians 2, 10. For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which God hath before ordained that we should walk in him or in them. There, there's a certain level here today of joy in finding the contentment that is given to us in Christ, regardless of where you are in life. He has put a contentment, a peace, and a joy in your heart that all the world, the flesh, and the devil cannot take out of you. Amen. Second point. The tech, second two is short. Enjoy God in the sunset of life. Some are in that position, aren't they? The pains we experience, you know, they're by design. I hate to think, you know, the things that I have faced in life that I have not gained or gleaned something out of it. And it's really the way that you look at it. it it's really today, it's kind of like a tap on the shoulder that says, today, as you hear his voice, do not harden your heart. Even though you're going through a dark valley, don't turn your attention away from Christ. The preacher says it's hard to adjust knowing that we are in the final stretch. And you think, man, my house turned loose. It's turned white. It's <laughs> All these things happen to me, you know. Well, I used to have a lot of energy and now that's all I can do to get out of the chair and go to the refrigerator and, and get a Coke out of something. You'll get over that. Some of that might be because you've gotten soft and laid back and you're not getting up and doing nothing anymore. Sorry. Why I'm, why I'm laying the cards on the table, I may, may as well lay them all, right? Amen. You buy a new house. I had a brand new house built when I moved back here in 1981. Now, if I left that house the way it was in 81, you know what I have now? A pile of rubble. I had to maintain it, right? Had to put a roof on it, had to paint here, had to do this, had to fix it up, had to rake the yard, had to cut the grass, do all this crazy stuff. You know, if you don't attend to it, it decays. It declines. It, it, you know, it, and the same thing with us. We, we need to pay attention to where we are in Christ. The world is trying to drain us of everything that God has put in us today. And then you find yourself, you get to that point. <laughs> you get to that point and, and all those nice meals you used to, use, used to have and eat, now it's all in a can called Insure. 
Drink up, buddy. You got it all in there. Nutrients. Steak dinner in that thing. Hey, that slice of lemon pie is in there too. Woo! Amen. I've never drank that stuff, and God forbid, I hope I never do, but I cannot imagine a slice of coconut cream pie in a can of Insure. Can you? Amen. <laughs> See, you got one shot in life, and there's no such thing as reincarnation. You're not going to come back as a butterfly flipping your wings or as a dog barking at the moon or all this other crazy stuff that people come up with. You've got to learn something here, ladies and gentlemen. You've got to learn today that your life is precious. It's important. And God's given it to you. Don't waste it. Amen. Praise God. Don't waste your life. Make it count for God. Thank God today that we have something today that is above the sun that we can hold on to. And that's the presence of our mighty God. Every stage in life is a gift from God. Don't Waste it. Third, no God in all of life. That's found in verses 6 through 8. Solomon's saying everything that he has talked about under the sun that you thought was important, that I maybe thought was important, it turns out it does not mean a thing. Man, preacher, yeah, I got, I got my 401k. I got my retirement plan. I got my house all lined up. I got a fleet of cars. I got money in the bank. I got money under the mattress. I got money in the closets. I got money in the ceiling. I got money stuck everywhere. But you know what? You're not taking one thing with you when you die. And what's going to happen? Your kids are going to come back, and they're going to take that, and they're going to blow through it just like that. They're going to say, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Whoo, isn't that encouraging? Amen. You can't take it with you. Why? Because all is vanity. Four things Solomon said concerning death. Let me give them to you. I've got to hurry up. The silver cord is loosed. The golden bowl is broken. The pitcher, it is shattered. And the wheel is broken at the cistern. So, Death, what is he saying in those four points? Death is an irreversible effect that every person is going to face. That's a reality. So, verse 7, he gives us the gospel that is found in Ecclesiastes. From the dust of the ground in creation, in Genesis, where God gave life, you know what happened. Adam and Eve squandered it, didn't they? To sin. God breathed, gave them the breath of life as he's given us life today. Man became a living soul as we today are living people. God created us in his image as the word of God declares in Genesis. And then sin arrives, that curse arrives to Adam and Eve as it arrived to you and I for all have sinned and we all are sinners today. They are not now only f far from God, but they've disgraced the name of God. And they're under the curse of sin, as we all have been. Every one of us have been in that position. And I say, has been. Because I am no longer in condemnation. Thank God, by the blood of Jesus, I have been liberated and set free in salvation. And what Satan intended to destroy me with, God made a provision through his son to deliver me with. That God, through his son Jesus Christ, would atone for my sin and die for me and pay the price that I could cry out to him and be saved. So sin separates us from a holy God and pulls us away from any type of hope today. But you know what? He remembers something. God remembers that we are dust. And it's dust we cannot save ourselves. I'll do better, preacher. It won't save you. I'll come to church, I'll get a Bible, I'll, I'll you know, baptize, do whatever. It won't save you. It's only one means of redemption, and that's the blood of Jesus. Grace is God so loved dust that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him, we can believe in him, on him, and he saves us, and we can have eternal life. Now listen, listen. 
Here's the end of the story. So here's dust created by the hand of God, breath given to it. Man then goes out, you and I, we go out and we sin in the sight of God. God convicts our heart. He brings about redemption. He saves our soul, what he's offering to every one of you today. And we get saved, but we're still living in an Adam Adamic flesh, aren't we? We're still going to D-I-E one day, die. But that's not the end. For you go to the book of Isaiah, and Isaiah said that one day, dust shall sing. Amen. One day, hallelujah, you read your Bible in 1 Thessalonians, for the dead in Christ shall rise first, and we who are alive and remain will be caught up in the cloud to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we. Have. That day, there will be a day of rejoicing in the presence of the Creator, the holy, redemptive God, for we shall see Him face to face and behold His glory. Amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord. <laughs> to know Him, to know Him in faith, to trust him as your savior. You know what you can do today? It's open to every one of you and dear friends who are watching today. You can bring him your life today. Maybe you've messed up. Anybody in here never messed up your life in the past? We're all guilty, aren't we? We all fit the category. But you know what else you can do? How many in here are never struggle free? We fit the bill again, don't we? You can bring him your struggles. You can bring him your life. You can bring him your family. You can even bring him your sins. And you can even bring him your adoration and your praise and your thanks. These altars are open for you today. The question is, what are you going to do with this one called Jesus? Would you stand to your feet?